Hey, Pewop gang. Tonight's dinner is going to be knock-off Chick-fil-A chicken nuggets. And so right now, I'm going to get the chicken prepared. Um, you have to put it, like, in a little marinade in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or more. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare that and let it sit in there probably for a couple of hours, actually. And then um, I'll be back to show you how... I do the rest, but basically what you have to do to prepare the chicken is, um, it calls for chicken breasts, but I have chicken tenderloins, so I'm going to use those, and I'm going to cut them up into bite-sized pieces, and then you take a cup of pickle juice and a half a cup of milk and put it in a baggie, and like I said, let it sit in the fridge for it said at least 30 minutes but like I said I'm going to probably let mine sit in there for a couple of hours and then I will be back and show you how to do the rest okay guys I'm back and I've got all the chicken cut up I made I've got 24 pieces here and then I also made up two little baggies full of 24 pieces and I'm going to put those in the freezer um, to make nuggets another time. So, this, like I said, I'm going to make 24 right now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour these into the bowl. And then I called for a cup of pickle juice. So I'm just going to use the pickle juice from this jar. I'll go over here to my sink so I don't. And I think the pickle juice is what is the magic ingredient that makes it taste like the Chick-fil-A chicken. I don't know from what I've heard other people say. And then it calls for a half a cup of milk. So there's that. So... I'm just going to swish that around real good, put a lid on the bowl, and put it in the refrigerator. And like I said, it says to let it stay in the refrigerator for at least 30 minutes. You can do this overnight, you know. It, it doesn't matter, you know. Um, you know, you can do your chicken the night before you go to bed, and then it will be ready to do the rest of the stuff the next day or whatever. Um. Uh, I was actually going to do that last night and I forgot. So, like I said, I'm going to cover this up, put it in the fridge, and then I will be back to show you how to do the rest. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. The chicken has been sitting in the pickle milk juice for several hours now in the refrigerator. So, I'm getting ready to take it out and then I'm going to bread it. So, how you do the breading is... First of all, I'm going to put a cup of milk and one egg in this bowl here, and I'm going to throw the chicken in there. I'm going to take it out of the pickle juice mixture, and I'm going to throw it in the egg mixture. And then I'm going to coat it really well, and then in the baggie there that I have um, on my stand, I'm going to put one and a fourth cup of all-purpose flour and one tablespoon of powdered sugar in that baggie and so after the chicken has sat in the egg mixture then I'm going to put it in the baggie with the flour and the sugar and I'm going to let it roll around in there and then it will be ready to go in the pan on the stove and then I've got my air fryer out over here because I'm going to make some waffle fries so I'll be back and show you how I do the breading 
Okay, guys, I've got the milk and the egg in here, and I'm going to whisk this real good. So, again, that is one large egg and a cup of milk. Got that pretty well all mixed together. That's what it looks like. Now I took my chicken out of the refrigerator and have drained the juice off. So just gonna put it in here. Now I'm just going to swish it around in this bowl, get it all coated real nicely. I'm going to drain it in my sink. Got it drained pretty well. And I'm just going to pull my little baggie here. Now this has my flour and my powdered sugar mixture in it. And again, it's one and one-fourth cup of powder and a table, or one and one-fourth cup of flour and one tablespoon of the powdered sugar. And I'm just gonna drop this chicken in this baggie here. And I've got 24 pieces of chicken here. And out of all those chicken tenders, I don't know if I said before or not, but it made three different servings of 24. So I have two more servings of 24 for later. Now, put those in baggies to freeze for dinner for another time. Well, actually for a couple more times. So I'm going to wash my hands real, real good. And then I'm going to take my baggie off of here. Just seal it up real good. Okay. 
Okay. Make sure that's good and sealed so nothing leaks out. All right. Now, we're just going to take our baggie and shake it real, real good. Get that chicken real good and coated. So when we fry it up, it's all good and yummy. Alright, looks pretty darn good to me. So I'm going to get my oil to heating up in my pan and I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like fried on the stove top. It says to use peanut oil. I don't have peanut oil so I'm just going to use regular vegetable oil. Um, I don't think that's going to cause too much of a difference. Um, so I'm going to do that and I will bring you back and show you what it looks like. Okay guys, there it is with the pan sizzling. Test to let it sizzle about three to four minutes on each side. So I've already flipped it. But see what? I'm just going to add some salt. Over here, we got my corn going, and that's just some frozen corn. And all I do to that is add some milk and about three fourths of a stick of butter. Just let it warm up real good with some salt and pepper. So it's looking good. I'll be back to show it to y'all. Plate it up. Bye bye. Okay guys, here it is all plated up. Got my waffle fries, they're the Great Value brand. I've got my chicken um, nuggets, and I've got my corn, and then I've got my dipping sauce, and I'm just using this stuff here. It's the Great Value chicken dipping sauce, and this stuff is so good. They say it tastes like the Chick-fil-A dipping sauce, I don't know if it does or not, but it's really good. I know there was a recipe for a dipping sauce with these nuggets, and I just, I like that sauce, so I wasn't gonna worry about making a sauce. Now, I did try the nuggets, and they're good, but to me, they do not taste nothing like Chick-fil-A nuggets. Now, with that being said, it's been several years probably since I've had nuggets for Chick-fil-A, so maybe they've changed. I don't know. But these definitely had a pickle taste to them. Also, I don't know if maybe you should only leave the nuggets or, you know, the chicken in that marinade for only 30 minutes. Um, I thought maybe, you know, you could leave it in there as long as you wanted. You know, like I said in the beginning, overnight or something. Maybe you should only leave it in there for 30 minutes. I don't know. So I'm going to try these again, and I'm going to try it with just doing it for 30 minutes and see if there's a difference in the taste. But these are really good. But I like pickles. You know, I like to taste the pickles and stuff. And like I said, you can definitely taste the pickle taste to it. Um, but to me, they, they didn't taste anything like Chick-fil-A nuggets. So, I don't know, because everybody else says they do. So, I don't know. And I followed the directions to the T, so I don't know. So, that's my dinner. I can't wait to dig in. It all looks so yummy and goody. And I'll be back again tomorrow with another dinner idea. Okay, guys, I was playing with one of my new toys that I got. I don't know. It's been probably a month or so ago. I bought it off of QVC. It is an upright mandolin. And I've got some summer sausage in here. And I've tried a few pieces already just to see how it was. And, oh, my gosh, I'm loving this thing. Um, the item number on QVC.com is K. 
five thousand. It's five zero 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 and then eight. I'll have the link down below, but I did notice that it is sold out. Um, I believe I gave thirty-two dollars for this, but trust me, it was a thirty-two dollars well spent. When I show you how easy this is, basically you put whatever it is you want to chop, dice, cut, whatever. You put that in here, and this here is your little thing that you chop with. You just press it up and down, and then it slices it. And it has all kinds of slicing and dicing features um, all inside of, you know, all up in your hair and stuff. And then it catches uh, whatever you're cutting or dicing or whatever in this little bowl right here. Absolutely love this thing, and I just tried it out. So I know I'm going to get lots of use out of it. But I'm going to show you how easy it is. You basically and you get perfect slices every time. I am so loving this. So I just wanted to share that. Thanks for watching. I forgot to also mention just exactly how safe this is because your fingers are nowhere at all near the blade. And also when you start running out of room, you have this little contraption that you just stick down in here to press that. So there's absolutely no waste of food or anything. See, if you just stick that in there. And I'm actually, I'm running out of room in my little bowl here. That's what's the problem. But that's it. So, absolutely love this machine. Definitely two thumbs up for me. And check it out on QVC. Like I said, it's sold out right now. But, you know, I don't know if you can put yourself on a wait list or how that works. But definitely go check it out. Bye-bye. Okay guys, I'm making smash burgers again tonight. I made these a couple of weeks ago. Jackson, be quiet. And uh, I'm going to make them again because they were so, so good. So I've got my hamburger meat laid out here. Go lay down. Go. Go lay down. Go. Got my hamburger patted up to balls. Um, and then I'm just going to season it with my wonderful seasonings, garlic uh, powder, uh, let's see, the Tony, how do you say this, Tachin's Creole seasoning, which is that, and then just some salt and pepper, so let's get these all seasoned up. try to make two double cheeseburgers so that's why I've got
four of these padded out. Alright, so I've got them all seasoned up, and I'm going to show you. Take it around here. And there is my new hamburger press that I cannot wait to use. So, we're going to get these put in the pan, turn the pan on, get it um, to cook it. I've already sprayed the press with some vegetable oil, and I've just got it sitting in the pan. And I'm going to turn the stove top on and get the pan heated up, and I'll show you everything here in a minute. Okay, we're going to throw one of the burgers on here real quick. There we go. It's okay, Jack. And we're going to press it. This is not picture perfect. I don't know what is. O-M-G. I cannot wait to dig into this burger. I'm going to say I absolutely love my new hamburger press that I got. I actually got that at Walmart. Um, I actually got it at the store, the physical store. And they're like grill, where, where they're like outdoor stuff's at and where their grill um, accessories and stuff are at. And I think it was like eleven ninety four. So, absolutely love the thing. I live in a small, tiny apartment, and we're not allowed to have grills here. But they do have like a community grill, and it's like an open grill. And I just I don't know. I don't like to cook off of those. And I do have a small grill that sometimes, if I have people over, I will take and put out there on top of the community grill and I'll grill that way but if it's just myself I don't feel comfortable doing that I want to have somebody else here just in case something would happen and a fire would start or something you know even if I was using just the community grill I wouldn't feel comfortable grilling just me alone so um you know I'm kind of limited on my resources and stuff when I want a really good burger but these burgers are the best. I actually prefer these over grilled burgers. They are so, so good. And I've actually got my mom and my aunt both hooked on them. My aunt, she eats them at least, I think, once a week. Sometimes twice a week. She absolutely loves them. So, these are just, they're delicious. So, gonna let you go. But that's what was for dinner tonight. 
Yum, yum, yum. Friday night, and this is what's for dinner. Hash brown casserole. A lot of people call this tater tot casserole. I call it hash brown casserole because I do not use tater tots because I do not like tater tots, but I honestly do not use hash browns either. I use the golden um, crispy crowns from Orida, and I use those in any kind of um, recipe that calls for tater tots. These have such a better taste to them, in my opinion. So, definitely, you know, if you do something that calls for tater tots sometime, switch it up with these crispy crowns and see how you like it. I guarantee you, you will not go back to using tater tots. Um, of course, that's my preference, but I do think that you'll like the taste of these a lot better than tater tots. So, what you need is a... Now, this is for your normal... 9 by 13 dish. I am going to make it in a 9 by 9 pan, but I'm going to give you the recipe for a 9 by 13 dish. What you're going to need is a package of the uh, crispy crowns. You're going to need a can of cream of chicken and a can of cream of mushroom soup. You're going to need one package of some shredded cheese. I like to use the um, Kobe and Monterey Jack blend, so I'm going to use that, and then you're going to need an onion, and you're going to need about a pound to a pound and a half of ground beef. So, I'm going to use all of these um, uh, measurements pretty much, except I will not need a whole uh, bag of these crispy crowns. I'll probably need maybe a half a bag because you just put those at the bottom. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and use the whole can of the soups. I'll probably use all the cheese because I like cheese, and that just goes on top. Um, the onion, I usually only do about a half an onion, even when I do the full version because I'm not real, real big on onions. So um, I'll probably only do maybe between a fourth and a half of an onion sliced, diced. And then... Um, I have a little over a pound of ground beef here. So, and like I said, I'm doing the 9 by 9 version, but the recipe that I just gave you is for the 9 by 13 version. And I also have that linked down below or uh, the recipe listed for all the ingredients and how much you need. So, I'm going to get off here and I'll come back and show it to you cooking up. So here's my hamburger meat on the stove top, and I put my onion in there. I used about a fourth of that onion, and I diced it real, real fine, and I threw it in there. I don't use any seasoning, no salt, no pepper, nothing, but of course, if you want to add it, you can, you know, uh, you do you. But I believe that there is enough flavor from everything else that you really don't need to add any seasonings to this. And I was also going to say that I actually got this recipe off of the show uh, 19 Kids and Counting years ago. It was probably like 12 or 13 Kids and Counting when I actually got the uh, recipe. It was before they had all their kids. But this is a recipe that they like to make. And of course, they made it with the tater tots. But like I said, um, my family... Uh, back then, I was living at home, and we decided to do the crispy crowns, and that's what I've always done, because none of us really cared for tater tots, but the meal, in general, sounded really, really good, so, like I said, we uh, placed the tater tots with the crispy crowns, so, I'm gonna get this hamburger meat all browned up, and then I'll show you what you do next. Okay guys, let's get to assembling this hash brown casserole. So here's all my remaining onion, and I just put it in a baggie, and I'll put that in the freezer for other meals. So now what we're going to do is I've taken the ground beef off of the stove, and I've drained it, and it's sitting over to the side right now. So we're going to take the can of cream of chicken and the can of cream of mushroom. And we're going to put them in a bowl and combine them together real good. And 
And of course, if you don't like um, cream of chicken or cream of mushroom, you can always substitute with, you know, two cans of the same, or you could use um, cream of potato, you could use cream of celery, um, you know, just what you like. I used cream of celery by mistake one time, and I didn't care for it, but I'm not a big fan of cream of celery soup, so. But I grabbed the wrong can, and it was definitely apparent after I cooked it, I took a bite. <laughs> okay. So. gonna stir these two together real good so they're good and combined okay I think that's pretty darn good so we're gonna set that back here and then I'm gonna get the pan all in. So I've got my 9 by 9 dish there and I do not spray it. It doesn't stick or anything like that. I've never had any problems with it sticking. So I already had a bag of the crispy crowns open. So I'm going to use what I have in there first. Of course I'm going to need some more. And you just want to line the bottom of your pan with whatever kind of potatoes that you're using. That looks pretty darn good to me. Then you're going to take your hamburger mixture and you're going to pour that on top. So like I said, I've already drained this. Spread that out real good. Make sure all the potatoes are good and covered. Looks good. Okay, and then we're going to take our soup mixture. Pour it on top of here. Hey, hey, it's okay. Jackson. He just wants you guys to know that he's here watching. He's waiting for his mama to drop something. <laughs> well, that's more like it, huh? He hasn't had a treat today, so that's probably why he's being so vocal today. He's like, what are you doing in the kitchen and not giving me my treats? Okay, I'm going to wash my hands because i got some soup on them. The last part is you just pour the cheese on top. Looks pretty well good and covered. And then all you do is you cover this up, stick it in a preheated oven at 350, cook for an hour, then you take it out, uncover, and cook for another 15 to 10 minutes or until your cheese is golden brown. 
And that's it. So I'll bring you back and show you what it looks like coming out of the oven. And of course, what it looks like all plated up. Okay guys, here it is all plated up. Have my hash brown casserole and a little bit of a side salad on the side. And I cannot wait to dig into this. It looks so, so good. See you later. Hey PWAP gang, it's Sunday. And today I'm going to be making pork cutlets, fried squash, and green beans on the stove. Um, I'm going to show you how to get my green beans first. Uh, what you're going to need is you can either use canned green beans or you can use uh, fresh green beans. You can use frozen green beans, whatever you want to use. I'm using canned green beans and I'm going to drain these real good and wash them real good. And then um, what you're going to need is some chicken broth. You're going to need garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper. And then I'm going to use, this right here is smoke gel. And then these are little smoky links that um, my mom has always put in green beans ever since I was a little bitty. So I always put those in there too for just a little bit of extra flavor. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to throw the smoke gel in the pan and let it get fried up real good. And then once it's fried up, I'll come back and show you what to do. Okay guys, the smoke gel is all cooked, so I'm getting ready to add the green beans. I'm going to turn the stove back on. And I'm going to add the can of green beans here. Then I'm going to add the chicken broth. I may not need the whole can. I'm going to add the cut up smokies. And I did two of those. Gonna add some salt. Gonna add some pepper. This is the onion powder. And this is the garlic powder. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and add that whole can of chicken broth. That's not gonna hurt. So good enough. Mix this all real, real good. And I'm going to let this sit here until it starts coming to a boil. Then after it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn it down and just let it simmer with the lid on it. And I'm going to let it sit on the stove for, I don't know, about an hour, two hours, doesn't really matter, but it tastes like your green beans have cooked on the stove the entire day. I mean, it is just so, so good. So, that is how I make my green beans, and I'll be back to show you the rest of dinner later on, and I'm also going to be making a German chocolate cake. But it's going to be the box kind, not uh, from scratch or anything like that. So I'll come back and show you all that later. Bye bye.
today I'm melting a little bit of butter in my cast iron skillet here and I'm getting ready to add the pork cutlets. So I've got my pork steak in the fry pan and I'm going to salt and pepper the other side. Okay guys, here it is all plated up. I've got my pork cutlet, green beans, my fried um, squash, and I did a little side salad because it sounded so good. My squash is a little burnt, a little crispy. I like it that way. I know a lot of people are like, ooh, that's a little crispy, but I actually like it that way, but didn't mean to get it quite that crispy, but what had happened is um, I had froze some cut up squash and it was really, really wet. And I tried to, you know, um, get most of the dampness out with paper towels and stuff, but it was still real wet. So it like cooked really quickly, quicker than usual. And um, so it burned. So that's what happened there. But I'm okay with that. Like I said, I like it crispy. But um, not quite supposed to be that dark. <laughs> but this looks so good. I'm waiting for the cake. Um, my German chocolate cake. I'm waiting for it to cool so I can ice it. And once that's done, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, guys. Supper was delicious. I just got done eating. And the cake is all cooled down so now it's time to ice it and i'm going to use this duncan Hines. let's see creamy let's see coconut pecan icing for it so we're going to use that and i am not going to be eating any of this for a while because i am stuffed like i said supper was delicious but just not hungry. <laughs> okay. I called my mom. She's going to come over and get half of this because there's no way I can eat all of this. Well, I guess I could, but um, no way that I should eat all of this. We'll say that. Because I'm sure if I had to, I could force myself too. Okay. So I'm going to finish icing this up and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So there it is all ready to be cut. Like I said, I'm not going to have a piece for a while. My mom's going to come over and get half of it. But I cannot wait to dig into it when I do get hungry because it looks and it smells delicious and I did try the frosting and it was oh it was good so I know this is gonna be good may not look like the prettiest cake in the world but I'm sure it's gonna taste great thanks for watching